jetzt der Verkehr. Vorsicht, liebe Autofahrer, auf der A3 Oberhausen Richtung Arnheim ist die linke Spur aufgrund eines Hufo-Absturzes gesperrt. Bitte bilden Sie eine Rettungsgasse. Yep, just another crazy day in Ukraine with stormtroopers hanging out on the side of the road. If you didn't see the stormtroopers, watch that video again. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukradowski here of WeAreChange.org. And there is a lot of absolutely crazy information coming out from Ukraine, which of course we're going to be talking about as we're going to be sharing a possible solution to all of this, which is the exact opposite of what many of our world leaders and corporate media representatives representatives are saying and trying to get us to do what are they trying to do a full-scale conflict and we're going to be talking about that plus a lot more as the president of the united states is now publicly trying to reassure the american public that they should not worry about a nuclear war this is the same man that made many promises and many predictions that obviously have not come true we're going to get into all of that plus a lot more but for today's broadcast, I decided to start it off with this video since, of course, some people are actually sharing it, believing that it is legitimate video for Ukraine, even though there's literal stormtroopers right here. Now, we have to be honest with ourselves. There's been a lot of disinformation, fake news and propaganda out there. And that's why the very trusted, accredited sources with the fact checkers have been working overtime doing the complete opposite of that, especially with the latest PolitiFact that literally reads like it's from the fiction novel 1984 with their headline, the U.S. did not double oil imports from Russia in the last year, and their byline specifically saying the U.S. did double the amount of crude oil imported from Russia last year. With fact checkers like this, who cares what reality is? As of course, these are the institutions deciding what you get to see online and what of course gets censored and banned. Other people in authority like Congress members also have been extremely irresponsible with sharing of information specifically around this critically important situation developing in Ukraine with Congressman Kissinger tweeting an old photo from 2016 and even falling for a Sam Hyde joke. Not to be outdone, U.S. Congressman Dan Crenshaw even decided to outdo himself with this post, bringing together all the propaganda efforts as if they were true in some kind of bizarre, bewildering post, which, which I thought originally was, was, was trolling. As the congressman brought up Snake Island, which even CNN corrected, he brought up the ghost of Kiev, which the videos surrounding were actually from a video game and not in real life. He talked about some kind of woman passing around sunflower seeds. Again, hasn't been verified. He talked about another woman preparing munitions, which might or, or might not be true. But then he adds to all of this that, that Ukrainians are fighters. And uh, they are. They're dealing with an extremely horrible situation. They are the significant underdogs. They are outmanned, outgunned. And they're dealing with an invasion on their land. So yes, the Ukrainians are fighters. But when you layer that statement based off discredited lies, which even CNN corrected the record on, you're not doing anyone a service and you're making people distrust you and this entire situation. And your statement at the end here is, of course, being contradicted. And we could all do better and build more trust with the general public if we just didn't make up stories, if we didn't just use footage from video games and, and act like it's real life if we didn't use old photos and videos and act like they're coming from ukraine today there are legitimate heroes there are legitimate incredible stories of humanity's incredible strength in the face of these atrocities and they're going to be discredited by lazy congress members which is an absolute shame no sam hyde is not going to be fighting in ukraine but some americans are as the president of ukraine has just announced the formation of a new international legion a new unit within its military as they have asked and received thousands of foreign citizens that will be flying in and joining their military the daily mail actually shared some of these people's stories this as right now many people dramatically are trying to leave ukraine with even sean penn reporting 
that he had to walk miles to the Polish border after having to abandon his car, which ran out of gas during the filming of his documentary, which we can hope will be an honest representation of what's going on compared to the utter destruction of truth, which is happening in the online digital sphere with these fact checkers. By the way, we're going to be talking about oil in just a little bit, but because of these fact checkers, we created LukeUncensored.com, our own platform, where, of course, we will be continuing the conversation and talking in a more honest, real perspective with an exclusive video later on today coming out just exclusively for members. In today's video, we're going to be sharing an exclusive interview we did with this doctor that talks about the larger implications that are still going to happen, the long-term side effects that are still going to happen with a lot of people who have complied with the whims of government. A lot of important information, a lot of bombshell information, a lot of nuanced, highly detailed information, which of course will only be available on LukeUncensored.com. Click the link down in the description below to find out more and to see the video later on yourself. Again, very eye-opening interview, definitely worth a watch. Now, when, when talking about the situation in Ukraine, we have to understand that this is a highly emotionally charged situation with a lot at stake here, as of course, the latest information that we're getting is that there is a 40-mile long Russian military convoy readying to enter Kiev. This from the latest satellite images coming out that were released to the general public and shows a full-on possible invasion of the city of Kiev, which could potentially lead to the occupation of it. This, as already, fighting has been very severe in all parts of Ukraine, as there have been significant losses on both sides, and some people speculate that this invasion is not going according to the plans of the Russians. Is that true? What's the plans of the Russians? Well, again, we don't know. I do believe that this might be a longer conflict than a lot of other people are envisioning here. Just moments ago, there was a major strike against a TV antenna in the middle of Kiev, which has resulted in the loss of life of some civilians. This, as the citizens of Kiev were just warned that they need to leave the city, as Ukraine has also announced that Belarusian soldiers have participated in this invasion and have sent troops across their border. The president of Ukraine is accusing Russia of war crimes and using cluster bombs and also thermomorbaric vacuum bombs, which, as we, of course, know Russia has used in Syria. Have they used it in Ukraine? Well, we don't know that yet. There are, of course, civilian casualties, as, of course, there always will be during war. And we could, of course, expect those numbers to go up with drastic situations, creating more drastic moves made by the parties involved here. This, as it looks like more countries are being involved with Belarus, Chechnya on the Russian side, the European Union, Poland, the United States on the Ukrainian side, sending in munitions, intelligence, and also in some instances, volunteers, along with, of course, training. Ukraine is also announcing that they soon may launch a preemptive missile strike on Belarus, as it looks like this conflict is already expanding past Ukraine, which we've been warning about, and would mean yet another significant escalation of this conflict, which, uh, in, in my opinion, is, is absolutely horrible. Now, for me, there is one clear way especially from a foreign policy perspective, how to limit this conflict, how to stop the financing of it. As of course, it's important to note that whenever Vladimir Putin usually starts a war, whether it's in Georgia or in other parts of the world, it is when energy and oil is at a high price, the conflicts and wars, of course, make energy and oil even go higher, which of course directly benefits Russia and allows them to bankroll this conflict. This as the United States, Germany, and other other Western governments are still paying Russia for oil. The United States doubled the amount of crude oil imported from Russia last year. This as the United States and other countries like Germany are literally shooting themselves in the foot with energy policies as Germany is getting rid of all of their nuclear power plants for some reason in order to appease Greta Thunberg and the president of the United States has instituted policies that have stopped domestic energy production and exploration. Why are we doing all these sanctions against Russia when we're still paying them 
come for, for energy. And again, I'm talking from a U.S. geopolitical foreign policy strategy. If I was in charge of the U.S. government, I would be asking these questions right now. Hypothetically, of course, since it is fair to assume that if the price of oil was low, if the United States was energy independent, if the world, along with the United States and Germany, weren't giving Russia all of this money, Russia wouldn't have money to, of course, bankroll these conflicts. And there's even assessments being made here that Russia is actually profiting off of this in the face of these sanctions, since, of course, the price of oil has gone up. That that analysis has changed, especially with the recent drop of the ruble. And yet again, in my opinion, hypothetically, if I was in the United States, if you wanted to end this conflict, this would be one strong way to do so. But it looks like the Western leadership is not interested in that, as, of course, we have the British Foreign Secretary joining the U.S. State Department saying that they're opposing ceasefire talks. Yes, the U.K. Foreign Secretary with the U.S. State Department are publicly saying that they're opposed to Ukraine and Russia sitting down together talking about a ceasefire. This as we have had non-stop news coverage about no-fly zones, which are a nice PR convenient way of saying a full-scale war with, with, with Russia. There's no other way of, of saying no-fly zone. It has a PR bow on it. It sounds hunky-dory, but we have to realize here as even admitted by the White House that having a no-fly zone means a full-scale war with Russia, as of course this would mean that the United States and NATO would shoot down Russia. Russian airplanes over Ukraine. Jen Psaki has made statements saying that the United States will not be implementing this, but there is a full on PR push for this, not just by the corporate media, not just by Congress members, but by highly charged emotional spectacles like this of Boris Johnson, the prime minister of the United Kingdom, being confronted by an activist who fled Ukraine and cried and broke down in front of him, begging him to impose a no-fly zone. This is also the policy that, of course, the Ukrainian president is calling for and has been regurgitated by some individuals who purport themselves as journalists, like Richard Engel of NBC News that said and appears to publicly wonder why the United States wouldn't just attack Russia right now, which, of course, would, would launch an international war with two strong nuclear powers. Another NBC, quote, news news executive called for Russians to have their rights stripped away in the United States, calling for all of their property, buildings, homes, apartments to be seized in the United States, and to, of course, expel Russian students from studying in the U.S. This was a policy also talked about by Congressman Eric Swalwell yesterday, which we talked about in yesterday's video. But by pushing for these policies, the corporate media is literally pushing for an insane, dangerous escalation of this conflict as even years ago, previously before, Huffington Post was making the argument that nuclear war could, quote, reverse global warming, and therefore a small nuclear war would be good. This, as just moments ago, the President of the United States, before doing his State of the Union address, tried to reassure the public not to worry about nuclear war with Russia, which is something that has a lot of people saying, if the president is telling you not to worry about this, it means that you should worry about this. This, as of course, we got the latest news from the Daily Mail that allegedly Vladimir Putin just moved his family members and loved ones to an underground nuclear bunker in Siberia. This allegedly, according to a political scientist, Valerie Solovnoy, is this statement true? Well, who knows? There's a lot of disinformation. There's a lot of fear mongering. There's a lot of fog of war. But of course, we do know that Putin did put his nuclear forces on high alert recently. And FEMA has even updated its nuclear explosion protocol to, of course, tell people to keep six feet away and to wear a mask. <laughs> Since, you know, if there's a full-on scale nuclear war, a mask might protect you. Yeah, <laughs> literally, that's what the, if FEMA is, is putting out on their website right now. And just when you thought this world couldn't get more ridiculous, more absolutely clown world, here we are. The perfect epitome of lunacy. And guess what? This is only the beginning of this, and it's going to get a lot worse, in my opinion, since, of course, 
Nuclear weapons are also outdated weapons. And as previously talked about by the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, there are other weapons more destructive, more capable than just nuclear weapons. These are weapons that are decades and decades old. There is far more superior, powerful, insane weaponry out there that we still don't even know about. And gambling our whole consecutive future of humanity on this gamble in Ukraine is absolutely reckless, especially with congressmen like Crenshaw and Kissinger at the helm pushing for more conflict. Now, again, I don't have all the answers here. I don't have all the solutions. To me, the, the energy policy is one clear uh, example of how to postpone and stop a lot of this. I might be wrong about that. If you think I am, let me know why. What do you think could be a possible de-escalation solution? But, but to me, stopping the bankrolling of this conflict is uh, a way to, of course, de-escalate it. And to me, this is the right perspective. Again, you think I'm wrong? Let me know why in the comment section below. I am wrong sometimes. No one's perfect. But I think being able to open yourself up to criticism and conversation is extremely important, especially during these key critical times where almost everything hangs in the balance of this. This is just my perspective. I hope it means something. If it means something to you, share this video with your friends and family members. The video I did two days ago also kind of outlines a lot of the kind of unspoken aspects of this that the corporate media is not bringing up. You can watch that video by clicking here right now. I got one more video coming your way on LukeUncensored.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org.